Yes, this being our last Monday night football of this <laughs> season, it's time to put Jamie and Carrie, uh, Jamie and oh, Carrie on the spot. Well, <laughs> <you're all laughs> <the States. laughs> You're not the only one tonight. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you want to come here and I'll present? <laughs> we might get a better team. <laughs> We're going to do their awards. Best team, uh, best manager, best young player. We'll come to those awards, but let's have a look at the team of the year. And these are the uh, selections they actually agreed on. And I suppose most people would have at least five of these. Ruben Diaz, outstanding centre-back. Luke Shaw, Bruno Fernandes, Kevin De Bruyne in midfield. Harry Kane, outstanding leading goal scorer. Phil Foden, Gary, why? Team of the year. Um, it might be a little bit of emotion in that, in terms of, obviously, numbers of other players, maybe better. But I just think he's so exceptional to watch and his emergence is something that's outstanding and couldn't be ignored in the end, over the fact that other players maybe have scored more goals and even those positions like Son has got more goals and assists type thing if you had them together. No, spot on. He, he, you think of the front three, he always go off goals and assists, and he's a player who I think of his class more as a midfield player, but that's the position he's played for Pep, either wide left or, or wide right. And his performances, and goals to be fair as well, but his actual performances, you're thinking, wow. You know, the way he plays, you think even the Champions League games, the plays he was up against and, and his role in those games. And I also go back to the game at Anfield as well, you know, the goal he scored in that game. He's, he's not just a great player, we've got lots of great players, but he, he's different, isn't he? He's different than not just what we have in terms of English players, I think in terms of in the league, actually someone running with the ball, going past players. He's a, I think his, his performances in sort of the last three or four months mean he, he had to be in that team. Has he worked his way into... England's starting eleven, do you think, for the Euros? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, look, will he play every single game? Because I think there's Gareth's got good options in those. We with Mount and Grealish and Sancho, Rashford, Sterling. Those sort of wide positions. I don't think he'll play in that midfield too, obviously. But I think that he'll definitely play in. He won't play every game, but he'll play in the most important ones. I think he's that good now. He's just he's a goal in him as well. The thing is, he's not just a player like you know. You think of some players that you know would play in that type of position that've got technical ability. He wants to score. Yeah, I think I think when we did our squads and teams, I, I think for me it was always a toss-up between him and Grealish. It just feels like Jack Grealish being out for so long now, it's yeah. going to be difficult for him to actually be in that team. So I think he, there's no doubt now he'll, he'll be in that team as part of the front three. All right, we've got six agreed mm. selections, so let's have a look what Jamie decided upon to fill the team. Eye-catching goalkeeper, Emmy Martin. Martin yeah, Martin listen, Villa. I think the easy one would have been to go for Edison. He's got the most clean sheets, but I actually think City's back four have been that strong this season. He's very rarely had little to do. We know he's amazing on the ball, but I think of a team who've gone from almost going down to being a comfortable top 10 team, I think he's got 17 clean sheets, the best saves uh, to shots ratio in the league. And I think he's just been a, he's been a brilliant sign and, and almost looks like one of the top keepers in the league now. Uh, so that's the reason I went for him. I went for Kufal at right back and I was, it was, I was thinking of obviously Man City as well, they're back four and thinking of, of Kyle Walker and Cancelo. And they've almost been battling between themselves and never quite ever been first choice. I think Kyle Walker is now. Cancelo sometimes plays left back, but I had to go for Luke Shaw at left back. He's been outstanding, but I love Kufa. I love him. He plays week in, week out. He's maybe not as most high catching getting forward, but I just think he's been brilliant and sums up West Ham's season. Uh, the midfield, I thought Kante, certainly since Tuchel's come in, has been probably as good as any player in the league. Certainly looking at some of his Champions League performance have been outrageous in these last few weeks. And I went for Son, uh, I was thinking about you know, Mo Salah's top goal scorer, there was Son, but I just think goals and assists, he's got more than Salah combined, and I think Mo, obviously Mo Salah takes penalties, whereas Kane is the penalty taker, so that's the reason why I went for, for Son, and also him and Kane, to be fair, for the majority of the season, being playing in a, a team that's quite defensive, if we're being totally honest. What do you think of his team? I, 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 did, I, I had Son in at one point, I just looked at the numbers, but then I just thought, do you know something, the last couple of months, and I love Son as a player, but the last couple of months, he's really disappointed me. I can't get that, um, that Carabao Cup final out of my head. I just thought they were really disappointing Spurs. and It just carried with me a little bit. He shouldn't do, because I mean, he's a brilliant player, exceptional talent. Um, but I just I changed him at the last minute. Let's have a look at Gary's team then. And uh, specifically, the five players that he had different to uh, the six that he agreed on with Jamie. In goal, you've gone for Chelsea's goalkeeper, Mendy. Um, again, Edison, I think you're right. But for me, Mendy, because uh, I think Chelsea, with the goalkeeper they had, 
had massive, massive issues and they would not be where they're at. And he's, to be fair, since they've come in, the, 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 um, the fortunes defensively have changed. Tuchel obviously has made, has made them brilliant defensively and he's a big part of that. And I think the impact upon Chelsea, getting to a Champions League final, finishing where they are now in the league from where they were, I think I'm, I've just gone for him. Because I don't think Edison's been his absolute best this season. I think Edison and Alisson are the best two goalkeepers in the league, let's be clear. But I just think his impact this season... But you weren't, you weren't sure best. of him early on, were you? No, no, no. I have to, I have to agree I wasn't. But I wasn't sure of Chelsea's defence early on either. Let's be clear. I, I mean, I, I was really sort of... You know, I was looking at Chelsea defence thinking, there's not a chance they could be finishing 6th, 7th or 8th. So for them to do what they've done is, is a big thing and I think he's been a big part of that. It's quite Manchester-centric, this team. Uh, a lot of red and blue in here. You do go for Kyle Walker and Harry Maguire in your back yeah, four. Yeah, I think sometimes you can overcomplicate it and you can sort of, the obvious will be staring you in the face. And to be fair, Kyle Walker has become an outstanding performer, I think, in, in, in a defensive position for Manchester City. You think about Manchester City's defensive record. He's been a lot more disciplined this season in how he plays. I think he's an important part of what they've done. And I think the fact that, to be fair, I think John Stones had a fantastic season, but he's cuddled by Diaz and Walker is a big thing. The pace on one side, Diaz is outstanding on the other. I think Harry Maguire is the outstanding centre-back uh, other than Diaz, I'll be honest with you, in the league. And that's not nothing to do with a... You, know, you look at him and say it's Manchester United. He's not honestly to play every single game like he's done. I think he's been reliable. I think he's, I think he's been consistent. He started to show authority, I think, and I think Manchester United, to be fair, have, have got a good player. I think Manchester City, to be fair, when they missed out on him a couple of years ago, if they've had him and Diaz together, so they got Laporte at the time, I think that you know, they've been almost unstoppable. Between the, team down. You, between the two of you, you've got England's back four there. I mean, you did say a few weeks back when we were picking our England team that Harry Maguire was the crucial part of that England team in many ways. He's injured, we know that. There was a suggestion that he could miss the rest of Manchester United's yeah. Premier League campaign. How much of a concern is that? It's a big problem for United. I mean, it's a big problem for England. A massive problem if he's not fit for the summer. Because they, I think it has to change. Well, you're changing your system. I think they can't play a back four without um, Harry Maguire. And then my other players that I had in were... I had Gundogan in midfield. Gundogan in midfield. The reason I went for Gundogan, I, I think he transformed Manchester City's season. At the period where they weren't playing well... I thought he was the one in that two, three month period. It wasn't, it wasn't De Bruyne, it wasn't Foden. In and around December, January, February, when they were sort of building that run, he was the man. He was absolutely out of this world in that period. And I, have to, I can't forget that. And what they've gone on to do since was because of him. Why did you go for Kante ahead of Gundogan? Because he's a whole midfield player there, three number tens. He's got a midfield. Uh, so I think you've got to have balance in the teams that you pick. I couldn't leave Kevin De Bruyne out. I think he's the best player in the league. I think Fernandez speaks for himself. Gundogan was, I agree with Gary, he had that spell in the middle of the season, but I, I couldn't pick him ahead of De Bruyne or Fernandez, and I wanted them all someone in front of Maguire, because I'm not sure Gary's back four could, would cope without that protection in I mean, midfield. We have, we have this debate every time we see him this season. <laughs> it's as if, actually, he's going to be managing this team in the next couple of weeks, you know what I mean? He picks it like, oh, I've got to Kante sitting there, as if he's going to be winning a game with them, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the best three midfield players. You should players. have seen him when, with the Ayar Touré when he picked his team. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how people pick teams and don't do but them it's like, it's, it's like, you're playing 4-3-3, three, three. I'm just picking the best three midfield players. I'm not thinking whether, you know, when you pick Skulls, Lampard and Gerrard in midfield in a three like ten years ago. You're not thinking, well, which one's sitting? You're just picking the best three players in midfield. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I just don't pick it like that. He picks it like, you know, I've got to have a holder. Yeah. Is that how you pick your managers? No, I just that, that's how. And then on the on the, on the left, <laughs> I just looked at it in the end. I went for Marcus Rashford. Rashford. Yeah, I just thought the season he's had on and off the pitch, and I just thought when he was doing all the stuff off the pitch, which was an incredible thing. There must be a consequence of that on the pitch, and that he would start to falter, and he would sort of, you know, the injuries would pick up, and his, you know, his distraction. But he's just kept going, he's kept performing, he's still there. And I think as a left winger, Mane obviously, I think has been outstanding for the last three years. Son is a brilliant player, but I just went for him in the end. Just his overall contribution on and off the pitch this season, and maybe there's a little bit of emotion there with what I said about off the pitch stuff. But I looked at that team and I thought, Do you know something? I thought that it was the right team, um, and I'll stand by it. Thank Who you. wins? Uh, my team beats his, uh, 100%. It's a fact. How? It just does. <laughs> How? It just does. Who's protecting Harry Maguire? So you're saying he needs to push up. Protect he drops going to win 6-5. Protect it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the other awards then. Manager of the year. It's a tough one because there are some really good candidates this season, aren't there? We think of... It's um, too early to pick this one. Yeah, there was a couple it's of too weeks early. ago. And, and I suppose that will... No, it's too early. Leading on it could be a, like a Moyes or a Brendan Rodgers, a Thomas Tuchel. I, but... I'm imagining that 
You've both gone for Pep Guardiola. Yeah, look, if, tu if Tuchel wins the Champions League and he wins the FA Cup and they finish in the top four, it's him. If Guardiola wins the Champions League, obviously, and you know the trophies are going to win the league in the next week. What if so. you base it just on I'm, Premier League performances? I, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm going for Guardiola, I go back to sort of last season, that, the last game over last season was that defeat in Lyon. That was a bad one. It was a real bad one. Everyone blamed Pep Guardiola for that. And they come back the following season, they had a much break going straight into the season, where they found themselves in the first few weeks. And you're actually looking at it and thinking, when Leicester beat Man City 5-2, for the last couple of years, as a Liverpool supporter, you're watching Man City and they're losing, you think, oh, you know, that this is great. When I saw that, it was a bit like it was just a normal game. I fully expect Liverpool to win the league. You know, when I was seeing Man City, the problems that they had, I didn't see for one minute what they were going to do this season. And, and this is what I said a few days ago. I actually think this is one of Pep's greatest achievements because this has come without a company who left, obviously, a couple of years ago. David Silva, Aguero's not played all season. These are the legends that Man City have built, what they have done in the last 10 years, with different managers winning with these players. He hasn't won with that spine. He's created something different. And maybe his perfect team, where it's just about midfielders, there is no striker. So I, I think, yes, they have the most money, you can say they've got the biggest squad, I get all that. But I think what, what Pep's done in the position they found themselves in at the start of the season, to do what they've done, I think it's, uh, that's why I've, I've gone for him. Yeah, I, I would change it if uh, Tuchel won the FA Cup and Champions League. I just think that, yeah. to me, if you said to me three, four months ago, Chelsea win the Champions <clears> League, win the FA Cup and then they'd be cementing the top four place, I'd absolutely say no chance. Well, what if, if Brendan Rodgers won the FA Cup? And managed to get Leicester into the Champions League next season as well. I still think that Tuchel or Pep are obviously going to win the Champions League. So I think that to win a Champions League is a massive thing. Um, yeah, look, Brendan Rodgers has done a brilliant... You, 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 you have to balance off the budgets and the players that these managers have. So Brendan Rodgers, you're absolutely right. Sean Dyche, even you know, at Burnley, we've talked about it before. These are exceptional managerial performances. David Moyes at West Ham, exceptional performance. We haven't even mentioned season. Bielsa because a lot of Leeds no, fans have been screaming I mean, about him, weren't they? To be honest with you, Bielsa, absolutely. Exceptional performance. But I would still go with Tuchel or, um, or Guardiola because to win the Champions League and the league in the same season and the Carabao Cup, which is what Pep could do, that takes some doing. That's an exceptional season in history, let alone this season. Yeah, history beckoning for Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. What about the player of the year? And you've both gone for Ruben Diaz. Make your case, Jamie. Well, I think, and I think I said on this show at the start of the season, if this signing doesn't work, it could almost be the end of City and Pep. And you might think that's a, a huge statement, but he was a £65 million defender. They'd never re uh, replaced a company last season. That was a huge blow for them. And he's actually come in now and been the best defender in the league. And, and for me, the best player. And City... City have not won this league by typical Pep way of, you know, they always score the most goals and they've always got a great defensive record, to be fair. You know, you look through Pep Guardiola's uh, time as a manager at every club. But last season, d defensively, they weren't as good as they normally are. And you'd always felt there was a weakness there. It did feel that. And he's almost, he's like, he's like Piol. He's not almost, again, when we talk about centre-backs now coming into the game. The amount of blocks he made, I think, last week in the Champions League game, I just love watching defenders like that. He reminds me of John Terry. And also, his leadership qualities for such a young player. You said before about John Stones cuddling him. John Stones is 27, 28. It looks like he's the 28-year-old and John Stones is 23 in some ways. To have that leadership quality and go into a team, that bigger team, with that many big-name players, and almost straight away look like the leader of the team, I think it's pretty special. Quickly on Diaz, has he surprised you? Yeah, because he's so young to dominate like he's done. And I think, to be fair, the best centre-halves, I played with the Apstam, you know, Palace de Bruce, Vidic and Ferdinand, and just, you know, each one of those makes the rest of the team safe. And Diaz makes the rest of the team safe. Van Dijk makes the rest of the team safe. A great goalkeeper, a great centre-back. Their impact is not just what they do for, obviously, themselves and obviously, you know, their own performance. They impact everybody in that back four. They impact the people in front of them. And Diaz is exceptional. And I'd say, I, early on in the season, just thought there's no way that City back four can, can do what, you know, they're not going to win the league. Liverpool are going to win the league, and we all said it. And so for him to do what he's done, I think he's been the most important player this season, over the season for City, because that, that was the problem they had, replacing company, and they've done it. Might not be his last accolade of the season for Ruben Diaz.
A uh, young player, they've uh, both already been very gushing in their praise of Phil Foden. So let's see their signing of the season. Uh, Jamie's gone for Thomas Socek. Uh, Gary's gone for Edison Cavani, who, if you weren't um, with us earlier, uh, has agreed a one-year extension to his contract at Manchester United. I think if Cavani hadn't have worked and it had become another Falcao, it would have, they would have become a laughing stock. I think you know, United would say, oh, they, they've got it wrong again. I think the fact it's worked, and it was such a risk... They must have been, you know, a little bit anxious that Manchester United recruitment team manager, shall we, shall we, we're doing it again last day, is it going to work? And, and it's worked. So there's a risk with that signing and it's paid off handsomely. Why does Socek edge him? I just think the impact of West Ham, I must say he had had a, you know, a taste of the Premier League, he was on loan uh, last season, signed officially uh, in the summer. But... He's almost a typical David Moyes player, and I think he's had a huge impact. The goals he gets from midfield, that combination with, with Declan Rice, and I think the season you know, West Ham are having, you know, we can talk about teams having great seasons or managers of the year. I mean, the turnaround from West Ham has been huge. I mean, a team who are fighting relegation now going for Champions League, and I just think he, for me, has possibly been the most important player around that, really, and what he's like in both boxes, and that's a, that's a huge part of the success of West Ham. Just on Foden, mm -hmm. I think... <sighs> Is that the most exceptional young talent we've seen in this country for how long? English. Wayne Rooney, once in a generational type player. People compare him to Gascoigne. I think it's that, ta it's that good. It's that good. It's unbelievable. And remember, he's playing at Manchester City. To get in that team with that manager, you've got to be something unbelievably special. So for me, Foden is something like could be something outrageous in the next few years if he gets it right in terms of on the pitch, off the pitch.